Hello again. We're going to be talking about routes, and a lot of people have been asking like where you can find consistent routes and so forth, and I think that's a very hard answer in general. I think that's loud. I think that's a hard answer in general because we keep on switching out routes a bit based off of comp and what week it is, but I feel like in most weeks you can play the same routes or at least unless you are making your own routes and you are asking other people for routes you should be able to play these routes you can also always probably play them safer than this is but i'm here i will be explaining every single keys route every single specific dungeons route for both tyrannical and fortified but we're playing we're playing most weeks we're playing kind of the same route not much difference I usually change in my playstyle instead and another thing that is changing is on tyrannical weeks we're playing um, rogue poison which reduces damage taken by 3% and on fortified weeks we're playing the attack speed and and cast speed slow rogues um, so we're starting with ruby starting with ruby from here and this is the first pull. I do the same on Tyrannical and Fortified Weeks. One main reason we're doing this is because I usually play with a Boomy. Uh, if you would not play with a Boomy, in general, you should know, like, if you are playing with a target capped comp, like Enhancement, say an Outlaw Rogue, and a, a Shadow Priest, you, there's no big reason to go like this. You could do a smaller pull and do one additional one and you wouldn't really lose time. But we're doing this in first pull. And... You kind of do want to finish this pull off, but if you want to, whenever casters are dead and everything else is low HP, you can start off by pulling G8 because this pack is pretty nasty to... It's, it's nasty to get aggro of the whelps to begin with, and then you chain in the rest. There's also, if you would take them all at the same time, there's three different casts coming towards you whilst you're going to struggle with aggro. And there's also going to be a stun needed and so forth, so forth, so forth. We CC this guy. Uh, because even with shrouding, he might pull. Because it's weird. You should see it run past. I pulled the Draghar and at least Whelps. Based off where the Juggernaut is, I take these in myself too. But usually I end up running here, waiting for one or two Blazing Rushes, then jumping out, pulling everything else. Uh, sorry, that was not intentional. Pulling everything else. Uh... We go boss, usually taking in some eggs if I have an enhancement shaman. So when you walk on eggs, they spawn whelps. And it also pulls the boss. So I would recommend pulling the boss with a heroic throw, whatever ranged ability you have, then walking on eggs. Red, it's gonna hurt still. The cast fucking hurts, right? Go boss, go up. Uh, now, the only thing that differs from tyrannical to fortified weeks here is on tyrannical, we'd go straight left, right? We don't need lust on the dragon. On fortified weeks, we'd lost first pull. On tyrannical weeks, we'd lost first boss. Fortified weeks, we lost dragon. Tyrannical weeks, we lost boss. Fortified, both weeks, we actually are lost in last boss rather than the mini boss here. Just need to purge and so forth, and then you're fine. However, tyrannical weeks, we go left and go all the way around. Fortified weeks, we start with one pack to get bloodlust back up, then go dragon. Uh, then we just go round, round, round. Tyrannical weeks you can chain in, but it's not needed, in my opinion. It's needed you're playing unclean or something else. Then we shroud or invis pot here. You wanna maybe wanna sap that or mind soothe it if you're shrouding. If you invis pot, you just run, 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 right? But there's also a little ledge here which you can run over just like this. Watch out for the smallies, go next pack. You can pull flame channel warriors together. It's not a big deal. Shouldn't be at least. Uh, I think one more efficient, one way that would be more efficient could be to go all the way around here. And starting from this side, pulling this pack first and then pulling this pack afterwards, killing the flame channel and after that chaining in and going boss after everything is dead. Or even taking two Storm Warriors on boss, but I think that could be messy. Okay, we're going over to Knockwood Offensive. Starting with this pull. On Tyrannical Weeks, if you have practiced, you can pull these two together, but I would not recommend it otherwise. 
there's also a pole here which you can stand on as ranged. You can either land on it with your flying mount or you can have an evoker rescue you upstairs. Mm, surely it works. You are having risk skips. And this is this video is not specifically made for 20 pugs. This video is made for people that's asking for my routes. I prefer chaining. Wh whatever you do here is you focus everything but the melee guys. Uh, and as soon as the longbow's horn sounder is dead, you chain to the next pack, watch out with frontal. Same thing there, focus ranged guys or full AoE there. But here you would prio, probably just full AoE or prio longbows um, and horn sounds. And just same thing everywhere. That's why I'm going 1, 2, 3 like this rather than 1, 2 into patrol because it's easier to get the patrol later on to this pack. And patrol only has horn sound in it. This one has two longbows and we're probably taking the lance mastery. We don't want to go one, two, three and then back and then there. Because then we're not chaining anything from towards that pack. And this pack is also messier. Um, same thing here. Kill longbows, move into patrol. Kill horn sounder, move into this pack. Kill longbows, horn sounder, move into this pack with the plane master and the beast. Oh, sorry, the um, war spear. Go boss, do whatever you want. Now... On both weeks, we'd lost first pull. On tyrannical weeks, we'd lost boss, boss, and last boss. On fortified weeks, we'd lost waterfall. Um, anywhere really doesn't matter. And last boss, probably. Um, mm -mm -mm. Based off of your last timer, you start differently, right? If you are getting last up, you go this pull. If you don't have it, I would probably recommend this pack. On fortified weeks, right? On tyrannical weeks, you could watch CDs a bit and maybe go this or maybe something else. But it shouldn't really matter as long as you have kicks. Also, here you might, dependent on what your group have, if you are feeling uncomfortable with kicks, you might want to focus the smaller guy that casts the primary storm speaker, right? Uh, you take the thunder beast whenever you want to, whenever it feels like it's in a good position from where you are. And you just gotta kill the totems, right? Here, I always like starting with Ahunas because they create a mess otherwise. I start with Ahunas into one of the Soul Harvester packs. Either one of these two, preferably. Top right or uh, second right. Uh, no, they are not updated. Sorry, Bolo. I can talk, I can show you later in a bit after this video. Just remind me. Mm. With either of these two packs, and the Bakar has been fixed, so you cannot remove the desecrated bakars by flying there and mounting up sadly so you have to play the beast car and the bakars or you would have to play corruptors or whatever you can but i'm not going to show them now you can get them from raid Rye or armor if you want if you need them now uh so we land with the hunas on a soul harvest pack whichever of these two preferably this one this one is a bit harder the g30 is harder than the g33 but it is whichever really should not be an issue. Then we play, if we land on G33, we go down, we try to pull in the patrol, G34, chain it with G21, watch out for kicks. And here, in general, you want to focus Soul Harvester, be ready to soothe, um, focus Dead Speaker as well. Like it's Soul Harvester and Dead Speaker that you want dead. You would usually also, let's say, next pull, which is with a Beast Caller. So I would usually either kick that myself and have someone else kick the soul harvester rotation not a big deal just watch out for them and ideally you want a lot of stops here because swift wind hurts warriors hurt beast car is a fucking mess if he gets his cast true just make sure to prior killing soul harvesters first then you could probably take g28 together with g27 whilst you are summoning the boss remember to go close to the boss as well and then you would take this pack after the boss, ideally to get Lust back up on Tyrannical Weeks. If fortified Weeks doesn't really matter, right? Because we've used Lust wherever. Now, this is assuming you have someone that can pull G42 and then meld. The way you do this is someone pulls G42 and they feign or vanish or meld or die. Was you pull the boss. So they pull, you pull boss, they melt, they die, they feign, they something. Dying, you would have to see our right, or you would need a night elf, anyways, to who can shadow meld and do it. 
Well, that's not good. We have Asher Vaults. I fucking hate frog routes. No, no, frog skip routes. I hate them. They're shit. They're slow as fuck. Okay. Thank you. That's more like it. Now, Asher Vault is dependent quite a bit on comp. Priests would allow you to, for example, skip this Draconid. Which means you would just play an additional frog here. But let's take it step by step. On both weeks, I think you lost first pool. We also got additional timer in AV, right? So so we can lost first pool and play around with the last a bit more. Lost first pool, nuke it all. Then second pool, I usually jump, I leap onto the tree, pull this pack, move back in. I have someone else to the tree and I'm just focusing on kicking as many lashes as I possibly can. Next pull is you lost, you drag it back here, everyone losses behind the corner. And then you don't have to worry about it too much. You jump down, you assign people to trees, and you kill them. You usually save this for funnel for boss if you have an enhancement. Kill boss. GG's. Hey, Buka. Run past these when the AoE circles are down. Keep these somehow shroud in this part or meld someone or whatever, right? Somehow to skip it, right? During pull 6, I assign someone to Icy Bindings, fucking naughty cast, and I try to stop every a lot of Waking Banes, right? Stack them up, watch out for ground shit. Uh, you can lust on any of these two pulls, or you can save it even longer if you're quick. This is usually where we would lust, especially on 45 weeks, this is a very nice lust. Mm, kill this pack, go next, not a big deal. Crystal Furies. Uh, you wanna prio the creator and the thrasher. We jump down, I usually use my either my Whispers of Rivosh or or Umbrella. Umbrella is RNG though, so I don't like using Umbrella. I jump down from here, straight into this pack, and usually it's in a good patrol timing. I pull G21 as well. That way, I don't like it if other jump down with me, unless they are like an Evoker which can jump slow as well. You can also buy a Gust Potion, but that's not worth it when you can just use a toy. Or as a warrior you can also leap, but then I wouldn't jump from here, then I would just jump normally. You don't need a potion, you can just jump off, you can just walk off the ledge. Be careful to not jump, if you jump you're dead. But you can walk off the ledge here, take the book back over and pull the two packs. It is also fine. Watch out for the frontal here, you want to prio this guy. But you want to put most damage into this guy because he's got very high health. He's got 10 million on a 26 tyrannical versus 6.4, 6.4, 3.8, you know. Here, next part, we are chaining the vault guards. The prior targets is going to be the low health targets such as Rune Seal Keeper and the Astral Attendant because the vault guards can be kited, they're slow, you can stun them, and they don't really matter. No, Umbrella doesn't work all the time, it can fail. Uh, you kill the Rune Seal Keeper and the Astral Attendant and then you move next. Okay. Same thing, you get the Lieutenant in whenever you can, but make sure that you have defensives or that you're ready to outrange the breath and if so you have someone assigned to Icy Bindings. These mobs do slap if you let them just attack you and attack you and attack you, but shouldn't be a big deal. Go next. Uh, as soon as these are dead, you should be able to chain with boss the remaining vault guards. Uh, however, if you don't have defensives, don't do that. Right, we're going down and there's two ways of doing this. If you have a shadow priest, we skip that and we play all of this, right? all of this and this is second pull i would recommend lasting this if you play all of this especially on a fortified week it's definitely doable you just aggro these then you run 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 focus the draconid when the draconid is dead the fuck wants something eh focus the draconid when it's dead, you go next. Uh, here you mind suit, so please mind suit this one to skip it. If you can't, if you can't skip it, you would play this as one pull. Uh, 
and then this play draconids that's it then you chain kill boss kill boss not a big deal this boss keep on running whenever he spawns the orbs he spawns them you move a bit and then you don't have to worry about them this route is basically the same on tyrannical and fortified the only difference is how fast you would go if you feel uncomfortable you can just play this first room then take draconid to the next one and so forth but draconids is what makes the time you could also split it up in two but playing the draconid here is really tight and messy going over to aa first pull is usually all skitter flies all lashers what i do is we shroud in or you just run past because you can run past the first skitter flies other people wait pull all three packs try to stack them up as soon as possible then you get skitter flies in as soon as possible without dying but as soon as possible then these are gonna patrol as well and you should be stacked around where the boss is ish and then they're gonna patrol on you just be ready with a wheat hunt or to pick them up somehow kill that go boss you can also take these later on a fortified week because there is, you need to kill the lashers to spawn the boss that's it right so you can take these later chain them onto boss the boss does nothing for 20 seconds or whatever play the guardian sentry i don't like snapping anything to this but because he fucking slaps right you can die it's not worth it he is rip uh go next and that's eagles we usually have a rogue to snap these two packs over Kill eagles, bam bam bam, kill boss, bam bam bam. And then when we're going here, this takes some time to pull. I would recommend going this side first, having them all jump once on you because it's gonna hurt. Pulling the other ones, then leaping to the pack and just starting the pull. Could even maybe rally because it, it does hurt a bit. Uh, go next, we would shroud after this pack. Yushi. Just to be able to skip this and play this pack by pack because we it's, it's it's fine on tyrannical weeks we'd play these two together without issue right and then we'd play one forager set on this pack or you could potentially even play the ravager with this pack and chain the rest to the boss whatever you need uh pull 10 is a bit naughty on fortified weeks it's a bit naughty on fortified weeks um, do it slow, pull this first, try to stun the battle axe, then pull the next one. Uh, here, this is a chain pull, but you start off with this, you move up, you just aggro these, right? Then they're gonna start spinning about here. You go for the invoker, you kick the arcane missiles and zoom, pull it down, tank it on the stairs. When they spin, you can stand beneath them, and as long as you're beneath them on the stairs, you're not gonna hit, you're, gonna, you're not gonna die from the wall and it's not gonna hit you, right? But they are gonna move, you can't stay in the same spot. When the invoker is dead, I would usually leap past, give a fuck about the dragons, go for the next invoker, kick the arcane missiles and babysit it. Because it's the only thing that's gonna matter, right? That, and then you just stun whenever these come in melee. You should have enough range, so all melee should just move on to the invoker here, kill it, and the range should be able to AoE finish off. Like with a boomy, just starfall should finish off the rest, whatever, right? it shouldn't be a big deal. Here you chain this into boss, make sure to be ready with kicks on fortified weeks, these arcane missiles fucking slap. There's two options to do this with um, with lusts, you can get four lusts but it's really tight. You lost first pull and then you're at like 31 minutes or so. 30, 31, 30 maybe, I don't know, something by that. So you lost insta. Then you last insta again bird boss then you get it up during veximus and you last that and then you last last seconds of the last boss but i think it's arguably could be better to do only three lasts and get them valuable and that would be last probably first pull then last bird boss during your down phase and then i would probably last this pull on a fortified week on a tyrannical pull i would probably last boss and this because this boss can be pretty naughty if it gets too long House of Valor. We're doing the same shit on Tyrannical and Fortified, more or less. Same mobs at least. On Tyrannical, we usually take everything in one go. I'm assigned to one Thundercaller and I stop all of that. And we have everyone else stopping the rest. Oh no, I'm stopping the other guy. We're lasting first pull both weeks. 
uh, on a weak dependent or if it's Sanjin or, or Spiteful or something like that, then I don't care. But if it's... Um, then we don't do it. But if it's not that, we usually do it like this. So we take these two to boss for funnel. The chain, we go onwards. I assign someone to Mystic. I assign someone to Rune Carver. That's me and someone else to Mystic. Usually when the casters would be dead, we could chain this in. Uh, but then we would also MC the Thundercrawler because there's no rush with that. And then we could also chain this in whenever the previous melees die, which should be at any time. How we did it this week with um, Spiteful when we timed the 27 is that we finished this pack because everything got so low. Then we chained in both of these, 5 and 6. Um, mind controlled the Thundercrawler to not have to worry about it. And we killed off the Mystics. And at the same time, when the Thundercrawler comes out, he's got way less HP than anything else, right? Um, originally. So, they should die somewhat at the same time, the Thundercore and the rest. We Shroud or we Mind Soothe here. Just pass this. Start the pull, assign kicks. Make sure to just slightly outrange the Mortal Hues. I tank them back and forth. Like this, kind of. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Watch out for the frontal, it's gonna force you to move a bit left and right, a bit left and right. It's whatever. Um, as long as your melee is ready for it. And the kicks is needed on the purifier. The purifier usually dies first, however. Which, so I don't really know why. Got more HP, but probably focused a bit, which is fine. Maybe our time loss, but that's fine. After that, based off of Tyrannical or Fortified Weeks. Both weeks we lost first pull. Second lost is either on these two mobs or the boss. Tyrannical Weeks boss. 45 weeks dads. The way you pull these together is you pull left side. And when he starts casting, I have the storm halfway through before he actually starts. When he starts channeling it, you pull the other guy. We're ready to kick it. It can be a mess. All right, when we go back, we either mine suit or shroud. And then same here, mine suit or shroud, whichever you have left. We spawn the dragon so he comes down, but we don't pull him. So you move a bit front and then back. You can skip it by running here, and you run to Fenrir, and you play Fenrir. After that, step this mob, CC it, or you can just be very careful how you move here. And you move to Fenrir, kill him. Uh, after that, on fortified weeks, you would usually get last up for this pull, pull 12, 13. On tyrannical weeks, we take it all in one. People are standing on this rock here. That way they don't get jumped, that's ranged people, and we have a rogue in melee. Uh, Tyrannical weeks, we play it all together. Fortified weeks, we split it up in two. Then we play bears. When these are 30% HP, you move over. Fuck. I don't want that. You move at this tree. Be careful so it does not run past this pack. Whatever you want to do is you want to start pulling these yaks together. I usually do this and pick them all up. Then I go to the dragon and I usually tank them in this area here. Usually, watch out for the stags. It's, someone is probably gonna pull them with AoE or whatever. He's gonna eat them, you're gonna hurt a bit. It's fine, shouldn't be a big deal. Now, you should have people for bears. What you want is you want the mine suit on this pack. That way, you can pick up the bear here. You can pick up the bear here with mine suit, and there should be a third bear somewhere which the rogue can pick up. As long as he picks it up and stealths afterwards, I think he should be able to keep it. Now, how we do when we're doing this is we are playing them all together. Mm. So I usually, I'm pulling this one. We're starting with this. We're also doing a pull timer. I trigger this guy. Trigger and uh, uh, pull 10. Pull 10, throw bear at Eight. Throw bear at six. Throw bear at four. What people have to do is, as a tank, you park and then you move close to it. It's gonna start attacking the mob. As soon as it does, you move to the next one. This one can be a bit slow. You move past it. And you wait like a second and one second and a half to two seconds, then you move to the next one. It should come a second after that or something. But you can't wait too long. It's gonna be faster to go from this guy to this guy to this guy. Or running past this guy, hoping he snaps. 
and going to this guy and then back. Eight seconds, four seconds. Because you do a pull timer. Yep. It's just because we're doing a pull 10. Trigger at two. Trigger at two sec left. No, trigger at four sec left. Almost missed that part. So we're just doing 10 because it feels fast. I don't know. So at 8, 6, 4, and you trigger at the same time as this. Uh, kite. We kite the sever. The sever fucking hurts. So you want to kill them all at the same time. You don't want to kill one too early because that gives all the abilities to the others. The deadly thing on fortified weeks is definitely sever. But you can outrange it. You can kite it. You can just leap out last second and you're fine. God King Skowald is a meme, it's a joke, don't kill him during shield, then you're dead. Yeah, they have a duration mark. Odin, try to bait spears, be ready with runes, don't use defensives too early. Boss should be dead within 3 minutes. Going to next dungeon, Koss. Dependent on what pump you have. For example, I usually spec into short kick, which means I can... I can solo kick the charging station of one construct. If we have a shaman, we take two constructs. He solo kicks the charging station on the second one. Our rogue kicks the suppress on the first one. And then we dispel the second one. Yeah, if you enter or leave combat, you, you're fucked. Or at least if you enter combat, you're fucked. This way you can also pull the sentry if you want to. But there's really no rush. We have You would have plenty of time with this route, I feel like. Uh, as soon as the constructs are dead, you don't really care, you just pull everything, make sure you get the sentries with you, that they do not spawn you, spawn their shit from the alarm, because that is the annoying part, the reinforcements, they have a lot of, a lot of health, and I think I'm gonna go for a break after I've done this vote, oh, I'm sorry, um, just that horrible keys, mate. So all you care about is just going to the next construct and keeping that control. The way we do it is then we go and pull G21. We move them down or we kill the Arcanist. Either way, we kill the Arcanist. Ideally, if you want to play it safe, you kill it. And then you train the rest to the boss. If you want, you can chain this G24 already from the start. But I would recommend waiting for the ad to spawn and then chaining G24. After that, our healer runs through, skips this, runs through, tries to get a buff if he can, and we're playing docks, and then he dies, he spawns, he comes docks with us. As soon as everything but the guards are dead, you can move up, you can start kiting already, and you can kite a bit slowly, then you can leap over, and go for spell effect on the imps, just be ready, you have people nearby, just make sure you have people nearby to, to stop. Uh, this kick talent is also huge for for second boss because you can solo kick the withering soul and you're also gaining a damage increase if you successfully kick right now the second part of course is a bit messy it's based off of what powers you get and so forth um and this is also based off that you do not get engineering orb if you get engineering orb you are only getting one summon if you don't have engineering orb you have two summons but make sure you can use the summons for high keys otherwise you're kind of fucking yourself um on tyrannical weeks it's not as important the things that you have to worry about here is searing glare and eye of the storm most as a tank sure shadow slash as well can fuck you especially with them raging with raging um not a big deal though i generally i don't like playing things with mini bosses because the two first you can get one shot by the third one people are usually blind and dies from the frontal however third one you should be able to play whatever with without an issue Go here, do a nice event, and then kill the mini boss. This last boss event is based off of two triggers, which is picking up the key and starting to open the door. So, uh, SPG is very questionable. There's very many different ways of playing it. I would recommend. I, this is probably what we're doing now on Tyrannical Weeks. I don't know why. Wait, 318 to 321. I'm not sure booker right now sorry i need i need to finish this then i can answer um this is a tyrannical route emo 
but the other way around would probably be better the thing is if you are in risk skipping these you have to jump over a twig here otherwise you're gonna step on a rune and pull shit and that's annoying because well they trigger the spawn mobs and that trigger these and you kind of have to play them uh so i don't think we're gonna talk too much about spg this is one potential route this is another route you could do skipping start going first pack chaining into boss uh this could be a fortified route still a bit naughty these fuckers hurt and especially together with boss if you get a void slash even with mitigation on boss with death spike you're probably dead as a, as a warrior um and spg is usually fine on time right so don't worry too much about it if you have an evoker a demon hunter or if you have gusts of wind potions and whatever you can get past here you can get past here and if you go past before you go boma you have these extra skittlings in this pack which is 3.3 percentage recommend doing that probably Tempo is same route for both weeks. Same route both weeks. The main difference being how big you go. Pranical weeks you should pull all of this in one go. Fortified weeks you just take these two packs. And based on how comf comfortable you are. You chain faster, you chain earlier, you chain better. Um, go this boss, go back. Skip panda, skip the first mob. Uh, on tyrannical weeks you can for sure do this on fortified weeks i think this is a bit much i would kill the i would finish off the first pull or if you have people ready with stops for everything you could take in the queen i guess but i would kill the first shots at least then chain the queen with next pull ready to tank the element the mentals here thank them here you don't want to have to force other people to move. This guy should be casting rather insta. Same with this guy. So people can just go here. On um, tyrannical weeks, you tank it here. Drag it back up. On fortified weeks, I tank it here. Oh, this one. This one I tank here. In this corner. There's a pillar here which allows the rest of the group to have a pretty easy loss time. I hate tanking it on stairs, it's fucking shit. Uh, chain the queen to the next pool, watch out for the bleed, watch out for the beetle. Kill the beetle, when the beetle is dead you can chain to the scroll and you can kill these off for the 10-15 seconds last of the roleplay. Uh, on both weeks I would probably recommend lasting the third boss, especially as a prop warrior. But as any other class, you would probably last packs. Uh, you would probably last. I would last whatever you take the shambling infester with. Uh, you would clear this room. Whatever you would do is, I would pull these two packs together. First, pull this pack. Like play this in any order you want, but finish the room with these two packs. This into that pack. You kill the smallies, chain. Then you start chaining both packs towards these uh, guardians and mistweavers. You pull them, drag them onto boss. And you kill them out of boss. After this, make sure someone is kicking mistweavers. And I would usually solo the water speaker to the best of my endeavors. But watch out for whenever someone is low health and then you cannot let a cast go through. Kill the next pack. It's a naughty pack as well. This pack is fucking free. 45 weeks, you can last it. I don't think it's necessary more scared of the last boss than this pack you just mitigate shit on this pack and it's fucking dead okay not a big deal that's that's it that's us talking about routes for every dungeon in 35 minutes i hope this is good enough